This is the second of a two-part lesson to help the fifth graders in this class here at Muldoon learn their multiplication facts. These two lessons are spaced a week apart deliberately and intentionally so that the teacher can work during the week to reinforce the, what they learned last time in the first lesson. And last time we made sure that they understood the visual and the, the um, comprehension behind what a multiplication fact represents. We covered the zeros, the ones, the tens, the nines, the fives, and those two facts in the seven table, seven times seven and seven times eight. Today in the one hour lesson, we will pick up the rest of the facts through 12. Let's review a little bit. Remember what to do? Can you count by twos? Yes, yes. we can count by twos. Let's go. Two. Can you count by fives? Yes. We can count by fives. Let's go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Can you count by tens? Yes. yes. We, we can, can count by tens. Let's go. 10, 10 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Can you count by nines? Yes. We, we can, can count by nines. nines. Let's go. Give yourself a hand, good job. Okay, so are your nines right here for you still with the eyes yeah. inside your head? Yeah. How many of you can see something right here? Yeah. Do you remember what's right here? Who can yeah. tell me what's, what is right Ooh. here? Ooh. Everyone? Seven times seven equals 49. Do you remember what's right here? Yeah. I could even put this up to help you. Would this help you? Yeah. Yes, okay, starting on the inside. Outside. Eight times seven equals 56. Good job. Okay. And remember, when I teach uh, at the university, adults will tell me those were the two hardest facts they ever had to learn. They could never remember them. Can you remember them? Yes. Forever? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. What I want to review also is our strategy for nine facts. Remember, I don't want you to count by nines, right? So we want to use the strategy for the nine facts. Before I do this, let's say, if I have eight, what do I need to make nine? One. one. If I have one, I need? Eight. One. One plus eight. what? Seven. Eight. eight. Right? If I have seven, I need? Two. two. If I have two, I need? Seven. If I have six, I need? Three. If I have three, I need? Six. If I have five, I need? Four. If I have four, I need? Five. Okay. So when I look at a nine fact, Does everyone remember what to do when you look here? Which, which digit is not a nine? Seven. One less than seven is? Two. One less than seven? Which digit is not a nine? Five. One less than five? Four. Which digit is not a nine? Three. One less than three? Two. When I said six, you said? Three. When I said four, you said? Five. When I said two, you said? Seven. Is two plus seven nine? Yes. Is four plus five nine? Yes. Is six plus three nine? Yes. The divisibility rule of nine. Okay, boys and girls. So I think we're ready to go on and learn the rest of your facts. So far, has learning your multiplication facts been fun for you? So it can be fun learning those multiplication facts, right? Do you agree? Question. I noticed when you did um, 9 times 3, when you subtracted it to 2, you could minus this um, 2 from the 9 and you'll get the answer. Right. Absolutely. You, you could do that with every one of them, couldn't you? Uh-huh. Good. Now, even though you probably know the answer to the 9s, one last time I want you to do it this way for me. Since they're both 9s, we'll take this one. What's one less than 9? 8. 8. eight. Which one's not a 9? One less? Three. three. Which one's not a nine? Three. 
One less. Seven. Could you all continue that and just put the digit for the tens place in your answer? Okay, boys and girls, one more time. Can you count by nines? Yes. yes. We can count by nines. Let's go. Nine. Okay, can you count by threes? Yes. yes. We, we can, can count, count by threes. Let's go. Three. Six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, Okay, so we went a little bit further than we did with the nines, didn't we? Yeah. So I have a promise for you. Did I keep my promise last time? Yes. Well, here's my promise for you this time. Pretty soon you'll be able, within about seven minutes, you'll be able to count by threes as fast as you can count by nines. Wouldn't you have thought that was silly last week, right? But not only that, there's extra with this promise, you'll know all your three facts. Anyone I ask you, you will know. Not just by, by counting, so I'm not going to have you just counting, I'm going to give you all your three facts. So are you ready to be with me? All right, you need to have your papers face down so that they're white and that won't distract you. You need to have nothing in your hands, including your pencils, nothing in your hands. Okay, raise your right hand, put it in your lap. Raise your left hand, put it on the desk. But it, your hand needs to be a little bit above the desk so your brain can feel and sense your fingers tapping. You are starting with your pinky, your small finger on your left hand. But everybody make sure they have the left hand out and not the right hand, okay? Starting with the pinky, say one, two, three, four, five. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Again. One, two, three, four, five. Again. One, two, three, four, five. Close your eyes and do it. One, two, three, four, five. With your eyes closed, tap finger number four. Look up here and see if you're tapping finger number four. Tap finger number five. It's really a thumb, isn't it? Finger number four. Number three. Four. Five. Two. Four. Three. Five. Okay, put that hand in your lap. Take out your right hand. Starting with your thumb this time, we're moving on. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Let's go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eyes closed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eyes open. Tap finger number seven. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Seven. Six and eight. Both hands out. Here we go. One to ten. Are we ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. Okay, now would you tap finger number four and finger number seven. Four and seven are your pointer fingers, right? Tap finger number five and six. Five and six are your thumbs. Do we agree? Yeah. Yeah. Finger number three and eight, your middle fingers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, again, four and seven, five and six, three and eight. Okay, I want you to put your hands on your knees underneath the desk so that your knees can feel your fingers tapping, but your eyes in the front of your head can't see them. Would you tap your fingers and count to ten? Tapping against your knees, please. One, two, three, four, Tap finger number four and number seven on your other knee. Number five and number six. Okay, are we ready? What's going to happen now is we are going to write the three tables on your fingernails in black vis-a-vis -vis marker. Have them right here. Now I use black marker because it will wipe off. Some of you will say, can I keep them on my fingernails? And I will say, no, you can't. Because how can I prove to you the eyes inside of your head can still see them when these eyes cannot see them anymore? Does that make sense to you? 
So three of us will be coming around writing the three tables on your fingers. Now here's the hardest part. Even if you think you already know your three facts, I'd like you to let me write them on your fingernails because they will be gone by the end of class. And I want you, when you're tapping your fingers and counting by threes, it has to be totally inside your head. Do you understand? You can't be whispering it. You can't be talking out because somebody next to you might be at a different place in their counting. Does that make sense? So we're going to put them on and when they're done, you're going to tap them and count by threes. And as soon as you think you can do it without looking, go ahead, put them down on your knees and tap against your knees. I will tell you boys and girls, I've been doing this for over 45 years and I have never had one person who couldn't count by threes and it's not going to happen here. Every one of you will be able to do it, yes. I can do it. I'm sure you can, but I want them on your fingernails anyway, okay? So I can tell some of you are still practicing because you have them on your desk and some of you think you know the eyes inside of your head have them because you're tapping on your knees. And for you folks uh, who don't have a desk, you just can't look when you're tapping them on your knees. You're on your honor. Open there. Okay. Okay, everybody, let's get them out on the desk and count. Let's go. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Again, let's go. How many of you think you pretty much have them, that you think you can do it on your knees already without having them on your desk? Okay? All right. This is what I want you to do. Tap your finger number four. Tap finger number four and tell me what three times four is. Four. Tap finger number seven and tell me what three times seven is. Four. Boys and girls, take a look at those fingers. They both, their pointer fingers, have twos and ones on them. Isn't that right? One is one, two for 12, and the other is two, one for 21. So tap your fourth finger and tell me three times four. Wow. Tap your seventh finger and tell me three times seven. Wow. Look at me and don't look at your fingers. Tap finger number four and tell me three times four. Wow. Tap finger number seven and tell me three times seven. Wow. Good job. Tap finger number five, which is really a thumb, and tell me what three times five is. 15. Tap your other thumb, which is finger number six, and tell me what three times six is. 18. Boys and girls, your thumbs are the only two that say teen after them. Your fifth finger is 15, your sixth finger is 18. So let's try this. Tap your fifth finger and tell me three times five. 18. Tap your sixth finger and tell me three times six. 18. Tap your fourth finger, tell me three times four. 12. Tap your seventh finger, tell me three times seven. Okay, let's try. Tap your third finger. Tell me three times three. Five. Have a look if you need to. Tap your eighth finger. Tell me three times eight. Twenty-four. Tap your ninth finger. Tell me three times nine. Twenty-seven. Tap your second finger. Tell me three times two. Six. Three times four. Twelve. Three times seven. Twenty-one. Three times five. Eighteen. Three times five. Fifteen. Three times six. Okay, now what is going to happen now is we're going to come around and ask you to count by threes. If you can count by threes, we're going to give you a cloth to wipe them off, right? Now, if your hands are on your desk, we know you're still practicing. We won't come to you just yet. If your hands are on your knees, you're saying to us, we're ready to count to you by threes. And boys and girls, you must count at this speed. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. And if you're not sure you can do that yet, keep them out on your desk and be sure to tap your fingers so your brain has the information. Okay. Shh, okay. And when you're finished, please leave your paper towel right on your desk. That's a sign that we know you're done and we will not come back. You ready? Go. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Could you do that before you went out to recess? No? You can do it now. Go ahead. Could you do it before recess? No. Uh-huh. Go ahead. 3, 6, 9, That's good. One more. 27, 30. Boys and girls, can you count by threes? Yes. We can count by threes. Let's go. Three.
Good job. Now, do this. Put your hands out. Hopefully, you've done a really good job, and these eyes can't see them anymore, right? Only these. Okay, tap your fourth finger, everyone. Tell me three times four. Wow. Tap your seventh finger. Tell me three times seven. Wow. Tap your fifth finger. Tell me three times five. 18. Tap your sixth finger. Three times six. 18. Eighth finger. Three times eight. 24. Third finger. Three times three. Now, when we turn our paper over, which is not yet, and you do the threes, all you have to do, boys and girls, is tap the right finger, and the brain, the answer comes right out of your brain, right down your pencil onto the paper. Or all you have to do, and the, and the thing is that you usually don't have to put your pencil down. You can tap your seventh finger right on your pencil, right? Yeah. And your eighth and your fifth, so you, that you can do that. So, this is not a race. I'm just going to tell you to go ahead and turn your paper over and do the next column, which are threes. Tap the right finger, the finger that isn't a three, it'll give you the answer. So how are we with our threes? I have a couple of stories to tell you. I should have told you I've kind of cursed you for life. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I had two boys, when I was still teaching over in Mountain View, come to me from East High School. They were seniors, football players. They came to my door and they said, Miss Williams, we were in football practice today. You know, we're getting down. He says, I said to Jeremy next to me, Jeremy, do you know they're still there? He says, I know what you mean. Those threes on your fingernails. So whenever you look at your fingernails, I know that you're still going to see your threes even though they're not there. I had Miss Alaska last year in one of my classes several years ago. I sat at her at a table at a dinner. She said, I remember you. You taught me my threes and they're still there. So they're still there. They're going to be there forever. You'll always know your threes. Okay, are you okay with that? Okay, everyone, what is three times four? Twelve. Three times seven? Twenty-one. Three times five? Eighteen. And three times six? Twelve. Eighteen. Okay. I have some very good news for you, boys and girls, and that's that you never have to learn your fours. No, you never have to learn your fours. Let's have a look. Do you agree this is a true sentence? Is four of those sixes the same as four of those sixes added up? Yeah. Do we all agree with that? Could somebody tell me what two sixes are? Twelve. And these two sixes are also? Twelve. And how would I find out what four sixes are? Twelve. So do, if, if you know your twos, you can double your twos to get your fours. Isn't that right? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Watch very closely. I think I'll go ahead and do it up here. I want you to cross out each one of these fours and make it a two. Go ahead and cross out this four and make it a two. And this one and this one to make those twos. Those are the only ones. Now here's, here's what we're going to do. When I, say, want you, when I say tell me the answer, tell me the answer. If I say don't tell me, don't tell me. Okay, to everyone, please tell me what seven times two is. 14. Write it very tiny, a little tiny 14. And then let your brain double it, but don't tell me, and write it big. Let your brain double that and write it big. Double 14. 14 plus 14. Think in your head. Okay, tell me what is 14 doubled, everyone? Everyone, please tell me four times two. Four times two. Eight. Write a tiny eight. Let your brain double the eight and write it big right here. Eight plus eight. Write it nice and big. Okay, everyone, tell me what is eight plus eight. Sixteen. Well, everyone, tell me, please, six times two. Four. Six times two. Twelve. Twelve. Write it tiny. Let your brain double it, write it big, don't tell me. Tell me now, what is 12? Okay. Now this will be a little bit interesting. Could everyone tell me eight times two or two times eight? Write a tiny. It's a little more difficult to double 16, but here's what your brain will do for you today. As soon as one person in this room raises their hand and tells me what 16 is double, you'll all remember it forever. What is 16 doubled? 
32. Everybody, what is 16 doubled? 32. Your brain will remember that, 32. Okay, everyone, please tell me seven times two. Fourteen. Write it tiny here, and now you can all tell me what 14 is doubled. Twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. Everyone tell me two times six. Twelve. Write it tiny, and everybody tell me what 12 is doubled. Twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, tell me two times eight. And now everyone in this room can tell me what 16 is doubled. 32. Okay, so you never have to learn your fours, but that's not the end of my good news. You never have to learn your sixes either. I want you to be, I want you to be thinking about why you never have to learn your sixes. Be thinking. Would you give me a thumbs up if you agree both sides of this are equal? Yeah. Okay. This says I want six of those what? Four. Fours. And here I have six fours. So who will raise their hand and tell me why I never have to learn my sixes? Because you could subtract three from it and get three. Okay, so you're going to start with three and double it. Is he right? Double your threes? Yeah. But where are your threes? Yeah. On your nails. They're right here, aren't they, for you? So, if you need to do a six, you use the eyes in the inside of your head, look at the three, and double it. Are we ready for that? Yes. Now, there don't seem to be as many facts here because we've already learned all of the others. So, I would like you to do the same thing you did. with. I would like you to cross out these sixes and change them to threes. Don't do both of the sixes here. You can only do one, but change them to threes. Okay, everybody, tap your seventh finger. Tell me three times seven. Oh. Write it tiny. Let your brain double it. Write it big. Don't tell me. All right, everyone now, tell me what 21 is doubled. 42. Everybody, tap your eighth finger. Tell me three times eight, everyone. Four. Write it tiny. Let your brain double it. Write it big. Don't tell me. Tell me now, what is 24 doubled? Okay, so now we're just switching them around. What was three times eight? 24 and 24 doubled is? 48. What was 3 times 7? 21. Doubled is? 42. All right, here's another tricky one like up above. What is 3 times 6? Tap your sixth finger. Tell me 3 times 6. 18. 18. Write it tiny. Can someone in this room raise their hand and tell me what 18 is doubled? 36. 36. Everybody, what is 18 doubled? 36. Okay, because there we go. If you put your pencil down now, please, boys and girls. I told you in the beginning that all of your facts from 0 times 0 to 10 times 10, there were 121 facts. You have 120 of them right now. We have one fact left. And the one fact that we have left to do is 8 times 8. Now, I used to say years and years ago, 8 times 8 is 64. Shut the door and say no more. We're done. Okay. Um, then somebody noticed that eights are both even numbers. Do you agree? Yes. yes. What even number comes before eight? Four. Four. Six. Six. And what comes before that? Four. So one of my students wanted to remember it that way and to show you how ancient I am. I was teaching when they invented Nintendo 64, which most of you have never heard of. But the students used to say, I ate and I ate and I played with my Nintendo 64. Then a fifth grader showed me a really gross way to remember it, which I'm sure you don't want to hear. 
You want to hear a gross way to remember it? Yes. Victor, come right here. Because I'm not going to tell you. You're not going home and tell your parents, I told you this gross way to remember it. Who's going to tell you the gross way to remember it? Victor, Victor come right over here, Victor. Here it is. I ate and I ate and I got sick on the floor. Sick for six and floor for four. You get it? I ate and I ate and I got sick on the floor. Ooh. Get it? <laughs> Victor will now tell you the gross way to remember eight times eight. Go ahead. I ate. I ate and I ate and I got sick. I got sick on the floor. Uh, Ooh, right? So it's sick instead of what? Six. And floor instead of? And I'm sure you won't want to remember it the way that Victor told you about. Thank you, Victor. Okay. Victor will tell any of you later if you want to remember it any other way. Yes? Um, I noticed another way. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Okay, now, the 11 tables aren't a problem, are they? No. 11 times 4? 44. 11 times 7? 11 times 8? So we're going to move to the twelves. Oh, please. Do you Yay. trust me? Yes. Put your pencil down and tune in. Remember, my only access to your brain is your eyes and ears. Let me see them. Let me see them. If I want 12 elephants, could I take 10 of them and two more? No. Would that give me 12 elephants? If I needed to order 12 pizzas for a party, could I order 10 of them and order two more? Yes. Yes. Give me a thumbs up if you agree that would be 12. So if I want 12 sevens, can I take 10 of them and two more? Yes. Everybody tell me 10 sevens. 70. 70. Tell me two sevens. 20. Two sevens. 14. 14. Can you put 70 and 14 together? No. How much is that? 70 plus 14. Who can do 70 plus 14? 84. Because it's 70 plus 10 more plus 4 more. Let's try another one. 12 times 6. Everybody give me 10 times 6. 60. 10 times 6 is 60. Right? What's 2 times 6? 12. Let's put 60 and 12 together. 72. 60 plus 12. What do we have? 10 sixes and 2 sixes. Let's try it for 8, everybody. 10 eights. 80. 2 eights. 2 eights. 2 times 8. All together, what are 12 eighths? 96. Suppose your teacher said, I'm sorry, boys and girls, you cannot leave this room today unless you know your 13 tables. What do you need for your 13 tables? What do you need, what do you need for your 13? You need your 10s, right. And what else do you need? And where are your 3s? Let's try it out. Let's do... 13 times 7. Could everybody give me 10 7s? 70. And can you give me 3 7s? 21. Right here. 3 7s, everybody? So what are 13 7s? 91. 91. Okay, boys and girls. Your 12s do not have to be memorized. If you know your 2s and your 10s, you can put them together. What I'm going to do now is something very cool with the 11 table. That you will be able to go home and multiply 11 times a five digit number and do the answer without ever doing any computation and see if the people in your house can figure it out. Are you ready for that? Yes. Okay, see if you can pick up the pattern first. See if you can pick up the pattern.
See if you can pick up the pattern. Mathematics is the science of pattern and order. Take a look. See what's happening every single time. See what's happening. There must be some things you notice right away, and you're trying to figure out what's going on with the other one, and then... What do you think is happening every time? What did I do with the 27 here? Oh. What did I do with the 2? Right here. Yeah. What did I do with the 7? <gasps> and how did I get the 9? Does it make sense? Did I add them together? Yes. Does that work every time with 42? Yes. Did I add them together? Yes. With 71? Did I add them together? Yes. With 35? Did I add them together? Yes. All right, but I want you to watch now and think carefully. Put your best math thinking on and tell me if this is still true. I'll leave one up there. Does the pattern still follow if I do Think about it. Think what we did each time. Did anything stay the same? No. 7 plus 4 is 11. Could I put the whole 11 there? No. no. This 11 made my 4 be a 5, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's try it again. Um, everybody knows what's going here. What's going here? 8. Eight. And then this plus this is, so I'll put this here. Then will I put a seven here? Eight. Eight. Now, boys and girls, this is not hocus pocus math. I want to show you, if you don't go home and do this, you need to show them why it works. If I want 11 elephants, do I want 10 and one more? Okay, so if I want 10 of these, 10 of those, would you all agree that would be 270? Yes. And if I want one of those, would you agree it would be 27? Yes. yes. Now look what happens when I put them, try to add them up. Doesn't the 7 stay by itself? Yeah. Doesn't the 2 stay by itself? Yeah. And don't I end up adding the 7 and the 2 together, right? So now we're going to try 11 times a 5-digit number and watch what happens. Now take a look at that. If I want 11 of those, wouldn't I want 10 of them and one more? Yes. So let's see what 10 of them would be. Would that be 10 of those? Yes. Now I need one of those. So let's look back here. What do I have first? Isn't that what I always had? Yes. And by the way, boys and girls, if I do 10 times a five-digit number, I'm going to need six spaces. So we, re we realize the first one is going to be five. just like it always was. But what is the next one? Seven. Because I'm adding these two? Mm -hmm. And what do you think I'm going to add for the next one? Six. These two? Yes. And then? Seven. And then? And then what do I put here, just like I always did? Two. You could do 11 times a 20-digit number that way. But if you're going to go home and ask somebody in your house to have you do it, you better be prepared to regroup, right? So let's just try one where you might have to regroup a little bit. Even if I change just a couple of these to a 6 and an 8. It's a five-digit number. How many digit spaces am I going to need? Three. All together, I'm going to need? Six. Six. Okay, we know what goes here. What's that? Five. Now I have to do this. What's that? Three. Thirteen. 
13, so? And then I have to remember one, right? How much is this? 14. That's 14 plus 15. And I have to remember one. What's this? What's this? Six. Five. Five and then? And then this is a what? Two. That's just a little fun you can have with the elevens, boys and girls, when you go home. You'll never have to do that in your head, but I guess you probably could. Now, let me tell you, so far you have, in between last week and this week, no multiplication fact tests, right? You're testing this on one. Okay. You're still not going to have any multiplication fact test until your teacher can do with you at least once for 10 days in a row or twice for five days in a row. And what's going to happen is, and I want to tell you what's going to happen so you don't blame her. You might get a slip like this with 20 facts on it, and you're going to get a half a minute to do it. Now, this is why you're going to get a half a minute. Are you listening very well? You are to run down through here, and if it falls right out of your brain, put it down. If you have to go, mm, ah, skip it, right? You run down through here as fast as you can and get everyone you know. How about seven times seven? Do you think you'll know that one? All right. How about seven times three? Do you think you'll know that one? But there will be some you might not know, right? So she'll say, time's up, and you put your pencil down. Then she'll say, all right, who will raise their hand and tell me one you skipped over? I skipped over six times four. And she'll say to you, what is the strategy for your sixes? What is the strategy for your sixes? Double your threes. So three times four is? And doubled it would be? And if you can't think what the strategy is, she will let you ask somebody else. Now, we're only, she's only going to do this about five minutes. She won't get to everybody. Then you get to fold it up and put it in the recycling barrel. It's not going to count. Now, there are going to be five that look like this, and there are going to be five that look like this. These, these facts are horizontal, these are vertical. Same thing, 20 facts, half a minute. Are you going to worry about it? No. Is it going to count? No. no, but it's going to strengthen your strategies. And when that is done, then she will be ready to give you a fact test. And don't you think, how many of you think you'll know a lot more facts than you did before? When all the stress is off, and still, when you skip over one, the question will be, what is the strategy? What is the strategy for seven times seven? Give me one word. Give me one word for the strategy if you don't know it. What's it on? What's it on right there? Oh, it's on a what? It's on a football, right? And if she asks you seven times eight or eight times seven, those are the buddies. Yep. That's your strategy, right? And eight times eight, you can use your own strategy, whatever you want. And other than that, they'll say, but Miss Williams, you never taught us our seven tables. Didn't I? Do you know seven times one? Seven, seven times two? Fourteen. Fourteen. Seven times three? Fourteen. For seven times four, I double my? No. Four, I double my? Twos, all right, and for seven times five, you know that. Seven times six, you double your threes. And seven times seven's on the football, right? Seven times eight's on the buddies. Seven times nine is the nine table strategy. One less than a seven is what? Sixty, what? Three, 63. So, how do we feel about our multiplication facts? Better? Okay. Boys and girls, uh, thank you very much. You've been an awesome class. I'm very happy to have come here to do this. Your teacher has been wonderful. So you won't blame her for your 30-minute quizzes, right? You can blame, I mean 30-second quizzes, you can blame me, all right? Thank you very much, boys and girls. We're now done with our, our multiplication facts. The students have a strategy for every set of facts from zero through 12. But before the teacher, the teacher you see has agreed not to give them a multiplication fact test during these, this week from the first lesson to the completion of the second lesson. And she will still be doing some little one minute drills 
uh, about 10 one-minute drills before she will give them a multiplication fact test so that they feel secure in each of the strategies for each of their tables.